Welcome on in everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We are officially going to start up this stream. I only have just a quick little sweep to take care of. We have the sink all sanitized now at this point. I want to do a quick sound check over here. Don't you mind me while we're getting started. We might have a little bit of repeating and echoing and stuff. Now I'm working with the same camera angles here, but I'm working with a little bit more natural light. It's funny, I wanted to try to start this stream earlier about noon today, post standard time. I believe that's where I'm at now. Uh, but that did not happen. However, I usually stream around 3.30, but uh, the Twitch scheduling, the, the scheduler, I usually, uh, is not powerful enough for me to do or doesn't have the right options for me to really give the right stream schedule that I want to do because uh, every week on Twitch the stream will just repeat and each show that I do, each next show is a unique individual show. Alright, now let's see what it's sounding like here. And there you go, you only got the littlest bit of echo. Everything's coming in loud and clear. I'm gonna turn down my music just the slightest bit. I'll double check to make sure that's not coming through. Looks like the, you can, I don't think you could even really tell, but the music's coming up on the, microphone just a bit. There we go. Now we got it turned quite low, low, low. Okay. Now I'm going to do my best to keep the chat up. And we finally got our sync camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, I already got my watch and my bracelet off. We're gonna go ahead and make sure we have some hot water. Give our hands a good wash. Oh, goodness me, I almost, I almost forgot to get that sweeping done. Hmm. Really wanted to handle that before I got to washing my hands, but oh well. So, now you might notice if you have checked out the About Me section, you'll notice that uh, we have like uh, garden to table, I think is something that we say, or uh, gardening. Uh, there is still an emphasis on gardening and Boy howdy, we are about to have a magnificent spring. I've been keeping a close look on outside. We're gonna get um, some vegetables planted this year. It's gonna be, I'm really excited. This is gonna be my first year farming in Washington State. And I'm really interested to see uh, the harvest, the results. Now we got a couple things going on today. Uh, Mostly, we're going to start, I'm going to bring back up the sink view over here. And right here, I'm going to start putting out all the produce that we need to go through for the day. Still, my slides are still just the littlest bit work in progress here, but we'll make do with that. Nice little TV screen for you. Okay, so the first thing I know I have, some crusties. I broke my own rule. I was too good at hiding the potatoes, so we'll have to take a look at that. Two bags of potatoes to go through. That's a lot. A 
We also got asparagus, lettuce, has to go. Let's see what else we got. Celery, a cucumber, carrots, gotten this nice and sanitized here. We're going to make sure that we give a nice little extra rinse off. We're going to turn our water to cold too. of these leaves, a little, a little browning, a little wilted. We'll just pull back the outer leaves on this. And there's one more leaf that just got a little, it was wet, so it just withered away a little bit quicker. And we'll go ahead, we'll get rid of that one too. Now this is the root, this is where all the dirt, dirt is. Then we're also going to kind of open it out, up because bugs like to hide in here because that's where it's really close to all the water, the wateriness of the plant. So you could get uh, earwigs or something that, that hang out, hang out in there. Now I can't see my chat over from yonder. All right, we'll let that dry there. We'll go ahead, get this. Go to the wig. Okay, next is the celery. Now let's see, we got a little bit of wilted on the celery here. Nothing looking too bad. Okay, we'll give it a nice rinse. And anything that kind of pulls away from it. Now people always have the question about like, well, how do I know if my vegetables are good and bad? And uh, I think I'm the worst when it comes to potatoes. I even brought, I should only have one bag of potatoes here and here I have two. And then again, I'm opening this up, get all the water. A lot of this is going to be either we're eating it today or it's going to go into a vegetable stock. Oop, gotta make sure you keep that water cold. This cucumber here, not traditionally, it's not on the recipe slide. Two bundles of asparagus here. We'll go ahead and we'll fan these out. I think a lot of times people are too scared to answer that question because they're like afraid of getting sued for some reason about what you should and shouldn't eat. What I'm doing here on this show is I just show people how I cook, how I eat, trying to show everyone it's actually a lot easier. I think um, I think 
uh, the more I look at it, like, the more people, like, want to, the more I look at it, there's too many cooks that are all about, like, uh, oh, you have to have years of experience to be able to cook, and to, do, to, to be on my level, you have to put, like, 10 years in the industry, and I think that's a load of hooey. The only thing, really, that uh, my years of experience brought to me with cooking is now I can cook and talk at the same time. I don't think uh, cooking really, really, really anyone can do. I think the part of cooking that gets people is the kitchen stocking, which is a slightly different beast than the cooking. And then once people even know what to shop for, then they're wondering how long can it last in the fridge for? What's bad and what's good? I myself am very interested. Oh, this, this one might not have lasted. Let's see. Yeah, so there's some extra water. That's a little mushy. Let's open it up and see what we're looking at here. Now I call these shows uh, fridge rates because what I do is that you know some we try to be as good as we can, and then these rubber bands they are super super helpful to have a few extra rubber bands right lying around. So this is part of the reduce, reuse, and recycle. Let's go ahead and, and set those aside for something that that you might need. We're gonna go ahead and fan this out, and we're looking for any anything moldy. We're making sure because we're giving it a, a, a good loop. This is right at, at the uh, the end of its life for this for a lot of these vegetables, and that's why we call them fridge rates. Because what we do, part of what we do on this show, is that we reduce our food waste. Now I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to advocate people cook, uh, eat rotten food. There's a, a bunch of sources on the internet that can let you know. And I try to be a no BS streamer. I always try to let people know when I'm a little bit unsure of something, and I never say that there's a definitive way to do something. Uh, I really, uh, there are a few things, like uh, definitively, we always wash our hands before we start cooking. And I think another big one that we really live by here on this show is clean as you go, sign of a pro. That's why I'm really happy to have the sink here because I tell people that I end the stream with clean kitchens like 90% of the time. And I never really get to show that. I never really get to show the whole cleaned out kitchen. Let's see, it got real quiet on me all of a sudden. I'll make sure that this is still up. All right. Now, these potatoes snuck up on me. So we'll take a look at these guys. And we really got to use all these. So we're just gonna dump them in. We're gonna see what we're working with here because some of these might be too far gone. Now I'll just keep the bag because we're going to just plant these outside. You see this? Now you don't need to throw this away. This is actually a great potato start right here, but this is too far gone. You guys have seen the roots I've shown before. When I still use one of these uh, potatoes here, it has just like maybe one of these fingers out. But you can see how well developed these nodes are. Sometimes I recommend uh, slicing through it 
and just slicing through. However, this is an example of a potato that is too far gone, but you don't need to throw it away because this is still a potato start. We have another good start right here, another good start right here. Potatoes are some of my favorite things to garden because they are a real big confidence booster. This one we're going to go ahead and toss because it's a little moldy. It could probably still be used for a start. However, just because we already have plenty of potatoes, I actually have two more uh, starts, two more bags of starts. We'll go ahead and get rid of that one completely. And then this one too. And then all the other ones, no starts yet. This one just, just starting. So we'll make sure to give those a good wash. And this little guy, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of him. He doesn't have any starts. However, he's just a little bit too small that I don't quite trust his, his thickness. Uh, so that start, we can go in the bag. And then you just uh, plant those outside. So you can even um, you can even uh, plant tomatoes or potatoes in a bag. Actually, you can just get it has to like be like a burlap sack. Cool. All right, now let's pull out the other bag. See what we're working with here. So these potatoes are about two weeks old. These guys are about one week old. And how we got into this mess and the start was that we went on vacation. And that's why I had just a tiny, a tiny bit of a hiatus again because I went to go to my sister's wedding. And it was very beautiful. But here I am back again ready to rock and roll. And this is more of an example. You can see an uh, example of what I was talking about before. You can see that it's not near, nearly as leathery looking. You can see this is an older potato here. This one, it's still, its skin is still pretty smooth, no wrinkles, it has just a little bit of sprouts. Now when they get like this, I still, I get, I peel them. I don't leave the skins on anymore. You can't you can't just chop these and these are no longer good to do things like twice baked potatoes and stuff like that. You're not going to want to eat, if you see the roots on here, you're not going to want to eat the skins anymore. And I cut pretty deep when I use my pota uh, potato peeler. I cut deeper than I would and I make sure that there's no green coming out. And I will put that um, I have red that uh, when the a raw, it's uh, you're not supposed to eat raw potatoes. I hear that that's poisonous, and uh, you might get a little stomach ache if you eat too green of a potato. And those are good rinse and we'll get back to that here momentarily so all those potatoes are done to go now these carrots are going to be fine i actually read rec uh, recently a great way to store carrots is you can i'm a big fan of uh using mason jars to, to store other liquids and such and if you uh, dice up carrots, they can actually last four to six weeks in those water. Let's see. I just need... We get a couple of smaller ones too. Booyah. And we'll put the rest of these away. These carrots are still great. Carrots tend to last a lot longer than other produce. All right, back in the fridge.
bridge with that one. And let's see here, how do we want to do this? We've got a lot of skinning to do. Those vegetables are already taken care of. We'll put these potatoes to the side. And we are going to be cooking these in a cast iron. That's how we're going to do it. So there is no written recipe slide for the asparagus. We're just going to kind of be winging that. Asparagus cooks very, very quickly, in fact. So there's another way where you can actually just uh, set it up top like this. You'll break down the lower ends here where it snaps off easily. The older the asparagus is, the, le the less likely it is to snap. So if you don't know, not sure how old it is, the, that's still pretty fresh. You saw how easy it snapped. Let me see if I can find a piece that's not so fresh. Now nah, that still snaps pretty easily nonetheless. Hmm. Uh, we did a pretty good job. Ah, there we go. So here, you saw even then I could like bend it, but it still breaks, indicating that it's still on the fresher side of things. Now I think that there's like a really big difference that you um, got to pay attention. That there are some things where a little mold is okay. Like in cheese. Cheese is a topic that we've gone over every once in a while. And cheese, uh, actually the reason why you would cut mold off of cheese is not because the mold would get you sick. It's actually because it would just change the flavor too much, which I thought was a very interesting little factoid. And you can see as I'm rinsing this off, the roots, these little starts of the nodes, just fall right off. And you can see how those nodes aren't growing from the inside, but they kind of grow on the top. And then what you do for those starts is you'd actually cut the tomato four or five times. So it's not one potato per start. You can cut that potato up, three or four about them will start. And I lost my train of thought a little bit as I was explaining why I like potatoes so much to garden is because they really won't let you starve. They are really, really easy to take care of and grow and a real confidence booster. If you're fresh to the garden, another confidence booster would be lettuce. Lettuce is another great confidence booster. Okay. We also have this bag of onions that we need to go through. So we'll have that there. I'm pretty sure that's all we have to worry now about this point. All right, so let's go ahead and grab a peeler. And we'll start, and I'll bring up the recipe slides so we can together start refreshing ourselves.
Sorry for the live editing, folks. Now I will see that that was that uh, the vegetable stock recipe actually calls for it is making one quart, so we're probably going to be doubling up that recipe. Uh, we're also again we're not going to be using any of our skins for this recipe. We're going to go ahead and peel all our taters, and we even under the skin I can see a little brown. So I use the, the top edge of this to kind of scrape it out. And I think what I was describing is uh, some things where you can't just pick the mold from is something like bread. I hear that once you see the bread spore, it's actually already uh, baked itself all the way through the bread. Which makes sense about how uniform the bread, you know, how it uniformly cooks, it would, it, it would uh, be infected kind of the same way from the inside out. And then some vegetables just get too watery so their cell structure breaks down and that's what's causing it to uh, start to mold up or decompose basically. I think that I wouldn't recommend anyone eating mold, but I think that there might be somewhat of a difference between uh, something decomposing and something that is molding. But we would need to probably talk to, let's see, who would know that for sure? Hmm. What profession would know the difference of something decomposing versus something that is rotting? What's the name of that job? And then while I'm here, what I'm trying to do is that I'm not trying, as I'm over the sink, I'm not trying to just stand on one foot or the other. Make sure that, you know, balance your, balance your weight, center your body. Make sure that your back isn't too arched forward. That you're not hunched over while you're doing. Having a, keeping your chest open. Make sure, like, if you're a, a smaller guy too, make sure that you're not working with your your shoulders all closed like this. Open up your chest. And something incredibly important in cooking, as with everything in life, you need to do it with joy. You need to be in a good state, a good state of mind to truly bring out the flavor. I fully believe that your intentions get baked into the cooking. And we're just sitting here peeling potatoes. We're going through all the produce that we have. Anything that was looking a little too far gone. Now, what I would have added to that vegetable stock, I didn't quite uh, mention it, but one of the casualty, we actually had a casualty in the, in the fridge. We had one casualty, it was a pre-mixed bag of salad that went down, unfortunately. 
but that is okay. It was already chopped. Uh, but what I would have done if that wasn't uh, too far gone, and I could tell that that, uh, that bag of what's it called? Salad was gone because um, the bag filled up with uh, with gas. So the bag kind of puffed up. So I knew that stuff was breeding inside of that. So that was a no-no, a no-go zone for that one. And I'm still peeking back behind the chat for anyone that wants to say hi. If you're watching this on the YouTube on the the reload, I try to keep it a good, entertaining stream, but please feel free to, to interact, leave comments, suggestions on what you want to see next. And again, please remember that the goal of this stream is to show that anyone can cook, and I think the real skill comes from reducing your food waste and knowing how to improvise, and knowing how and knowing when to improvise with your food. I've had a couple of classic mess ups so far. I'm really not afraid of making a mistake on camera. In fact, I was actually going to show a few weeks ago, I uh, had some basil and we did Amy and Bobby's Caprese lasagna is my fancy way of saying a vegetarian lasagna. I had, uh, I had uh, basil and I made a note about how basil was out of season right now. And this is actually one of my failures right here is that um, I did a very, um, this one I did okay potting and gave it enough room, but this one right here that I had potted and this one just had no, no chance. I really, uh, I really sabotaged the root system and it just had no hope. Um, I was still pretty surprised to even find living basil like that because it is, uh, it was just two, it was three weeks before spring, maybe four weeks before spring, before the equinox hit. And I was just surprised to see it. So it probably had a really hard journey uh, in the truck on its way over. Oh, speaking of which, chat. There goes the chat. Gotta bring that back up. He's over here on the old Boba Fett. Now I'm using a potato peeler here, but if you want to kind of get fancy, you can use, I believe, a paring knife and you kind of just work at it like this the other way around when you're using a paring knife. Um, this just makes it a little easier to kind of like uh, talk at the same time. I'm actually, uh, I don't actually use a knife too often, often, but if I was in a commercial kitchen, I definitely be using that because this would wear out on me too quickly. And it is uh, harder to sharpen. So eventually over time this will kind of dull out, right? But sometimes it doesn't because you can always make the metal a lot harder. It is cutting into something very soft and it's not like it's hitting a cutting board, a hard surface. It's always just cutting a potato. So potato peelers will still last a long time. But uh, their life span will definitely be shortened if you throw something like this into the dishwasher. Something we go over is that uh, we're really big on dishwasher use. I try to advocate for people using the dishwasher than to hand wash everything because it's a water saver and it washes things at a higher temperature and it uses soap that is gosh darn near corrosive. So all in all, the dishwasher just does a better job than you ever could. But there is a few things that just don't go well in there. Some appliances, of course, um, tubbleware lids may not be the best. Non uh, pots and pans, while you can hand 
hand wash those. Uh, the life expectancy will drop in the dishwasher, but I do still recommend throwing them into the dishwasher. The big no-nos for the dishwasher are knives, because they'll dull too quickly on you. Cheese graters, cheese planes, wooden spoons, even though I've been pretty bad about that, I say no wooden spoons and I'll still end up washing them then every so often, but I really should just be using, I should just be scrubbing them clean after I'm done using them and then washing them down with some distilled white vinegar. And then also if you are uh, happen to be viewing me on, the, on Twitch, you can actually leave a suggestion down in the suggestion box. You can, uh, so that is the way you can comment kind of directly on my Twitch profile. If there is something that you want to see me cook, I made up a recipe to cook for Amy and Bobby, and that was the Capresse lasagna. It was almost a flawless success, but I really would like to do that recipe again just because uh, we did a white sauce. And it just took me, uh, I had to fix the white sauce. Uh, but that was a really good learning experience with the white sauce because now, uh, I did a very good job of not letting it break. It came out way too thick because uh, I made a heavy white sauce and it could be used for a souffle. And I got my measurements off just a little bit and it was coming out super thick, but we're able to thin it down And then also, when I'm talking about, make sure you don't lock your legs while you're doing this. You need to make sure that you're getting blood throw, flow through your whole body. There's uh, nothing about cooking that is low skill. Or, uh, yeah. I've been hearing a lot of people, like uh, a lot of people from the service industry I've been speaking up recently about how hard kitchen work is. And I fully, fully support them because really not everyone can do that job. You could, in some places, you could have literally hundreds of people waiting on you and you just, there you can't do it fast enough. You know? And then there's a wait, then you, when you get on a waiting list going through the, the lunch rush. When the, and it's uh, always been really the wild, wild west for everything. Like the restaurant seems to be the wild west of labor rights but it's still very backwards it's still very sexist it's really funny about how there is all that there's this bunch of quote-unquote traditional roles and about how people say that women belong in the kitchen or that but all that changes as soon as you get out into the commercial kitchens and all the all the slutting you have to be it's male dominated again and something else that i really like to uh, articulate on the show is that uh, leave your hell's kitchen shenanigans at home like, that is not the way a kitchen operates uh you uh, if you are a big yeller, if you're yelling all the time in the kitchen, if you're throwing stuff around all the time, get lost. You ain't a cook. As much as you try to be, you're just poisoning the people around you with your mentality. There's absolutely no reason anyone should be yelling in the kitchen. 
Now there's a difference between yelling and what's the word I'm looking for? Enunciating, isn't it? Projecting, yes, projecting your voice so your kitchen can hear you is different than yelling. Because when you're projecting, you can direct people. But if you're just a big old yeller swearing a storm up and down, like what are you even doing? Just making everyone around you nervous for no reason. Then you're gonna go up and throw hands when something isn't happening right. It's totally backwards. It's but I see these examples all the time on TV and I just really want people to know I'm like, hey, that's not normal. That, that's not right. That's not the way it has to be. Um, and luckily, oh man, I also always really try to sing the praise of Gen Z years because man, oh man, that, I, I, I've been waiting, I've been telling people, I'm like, just you wait for these folks to get a little bit of emotional maturity because they've explored their emotions more than any generation I know have before. And now they're getting that emotional maturity and they're some of the best communicators that I've ever seen. They're putting us all to shame. And so you guys definitely can calmly address the situation. But you have to understand that that person's not going to want to do it if there's like food orders ready to go out the door. And people are really quick to try to fire you on the line too. It's a little different than other jobs where people will try to fire you while you're on the line. So, but here's the thing, is that there's only certain people that actually have the authority to do that. So I always recommend, you can get yourself in a really bad situation with this. You. You can't just take one part of what I'm saying and apply it because it's a pretty nuanced. You need to go, you need to know who you work for. You need to actually know who the boss is. Like, you're going to have your general manager. Like, I'm not saying that you have to be buddy buddy with the owner, though that does help. You should know of the owner. But you should understand who your general managers are. You should understand what the expectations are of you, of what to do. And every kitchen's a little bit different on how they split up the work. What you should not be doing as a cook, because it's cross-contaminating, is that you should not be going back and forth between cooking and washing dishes. Now it's a little bit different because you can cook and then at the end of the day wash dishes. But it's a sanitary problem if you are cooking, washing dishes, and then going back to cooking and then washing dishes again. That's frankly downright disgusting. And a uh, close second to it is frankly waitresses that bust their own tables. Um, that's kind of really gross too. Uh, that is a restaurant cutting corners and frankly I don't think you should support it because they uh, someone that buses is really important to have them come bus the food because people have been eating on those plates spitting on those plates so you're telling me that people some restaurant owners think it's okay to be able to have the waitress who has no time to wash her hands to pick up dirty plates, you're out of your mind. Out of your mind. But there's a lot of stuff that restaurant workers try to get away with, and they always do such a good job of keeping everyone from talking to one another. 
something else I should just say this is an in general thing. It is not it is not against the law to discuss your wages. The only it, you should discuss your wages. You absolutely should talk to your co-workers about your wages, what people are making. A hundred percent. Don't let your boss intimidate you into not letting you talk about wages. It's very important to know who you're working for. This, and the reason why I'm emphasizing this so much is, and I know guys, I get it. Not everyone is in the position to be able to do something like that. But it's a slow death. Alright. Oh, we got one more hiding in there. Where did it go? I know a lot of people are intimidated for to ask their boss for a raise or something like that. And you really shouldn't be. Because honestly, I feel like the restaurant, we should just leave, we should leave tipping behind. It's a old practice that uh, is not good, to put it simply. There's no reason, like that, basically anyone that's, any restaurant that's tipping, I know people like to tip, but that's not the point. When people, the people I believe in tipping in are your DJs and your streamers. You know, everything else, like, specifically, when I do own a restaurant, I'm not going to have tips available. It's going to be an insult, actually, for people to think that they can take care of my employees better than me because I'm going to make sure everyone's well taken care of. And there's a lot of economists that will try to tell me that I'm living a fantasy that there's no way that I'll be able to survive in a capitalistic society if I don't exploit my workers. I heavily disagree with that. Because I believe in people. I believe in the goodness of people. And when you invest in someone, and you take care of them, they will invest back into you. And the reason why restaurant managers don't believe that is because they don't because they wouldn't do that back for you they they won't return that they wouldn't do it themselves is what i'm saying the only thing that's unimaginable is the only thing people will never do is the thing that they never think of Ah, eh, that's not necessarily true true All right. Oh yeah, tipping is definitely. Here, let me get my, uh, this uh, vegetable cutting is happening a lot. It's uh, taking a bit longer than I thought, so I'm gonna get the chat on over here. Like I said, for those that don't know, this is Mr. Boba Fett, the little mobile chat. This is your chat representation right there. Yeah, but there's so there's so much that happens. It's just ridiculous. Like um, that happens in the restaurant where people are like, "Yeah, I've been working a a 13-hour shift, and I was told I had to work here, and until uh, my relief came." And then I've heard 
I've heard horror stories where their person was like, yeah, I had to get, I had to go off the clock and then I had to stay and work until someone showed up. And it's, it's like almost unbelievable that someone would let them do that to themselves. But it, it's a, it, ah, it broke my heart hearing a story like that. It really did. So this guy wasn't even getting paid and he was working. And that's what employers will do to you. They will gladly see you work for free. Like what? That's re absolutely ridiculous. And they'll try it and, and the restaurant industry, they'll, they'll try doing that to you all the time. You know, when I first started in the restaurant, I didn't know that I could get full, that being a full-time employee, that I could be handed benefits. I had no idea that was a thing. And then here's, I was working 40 hours all the time. But you know what that manager's job really was? And I'll put them on blast. I don't give a, I do not give a damn, but today is not that, that day. I'm not picking a fight with them today. But I've known some scumbag managers and their day will come. But the thing is, is that I try to just let karma take care of most of that stuff because you know what? Those restaurants fail because they keep on relying on taking more and more from their employees. And at this point, employees almost have nothing to give. But even just recently, I, uh, I do delivery driving on the side. And even just recently, I went into a Taco Bell. And this, and the first time this guy, you know, he was four, it was four hours without him having a break. It is, so here's the thing about how they will define breaks in the US. It is your responsibility to take a break how they'll define that. So, and guess what? The more times that you work through your break, you're not doing anyone a favor. You're not doing, you're not even doing your boss a favor because your boss doesn't even know your manager that's making you do that, doesn't even know what's good for himself because he's, he is uh, throwing away his own rights. And the thing is, is that people already lost their jobs. People already got beaten. People already got threatened. So we can take a 10 minute break after three hours. And that's it. And you know what? That's all restaurant workers get sometimes. That's why those laws are in. Office workers have no idea. They'll spend 30, office workers will spend 30 minutes working the whole day. And here, a kitchen worker is barely even able to squeeze in his 10 minute break, asked to get work, asked to work through his 30 minute break, or just not get it. I got hazed on my way out. They were trying to get, I was getting hazed on one of my jobs. But here's the thing that I'm very proud, of, proud about is that I quit smoking cigarettes while I was on the line, which is, I've never heard of anyone else doing that. You just boast like that. It's hard enough for people to cook, smoke cigarettes, but you'll hear some folks say that smoking cigarettes and cooking goes hand in hand. You even see it in like uh, One Piece with Sanji. Everyone's going out on their smoke breaks. And I quit smoking on the, on the line and then you know what happened? I didn't get breaks anymore. And they just kept me on the line for eight hours straight. And I did it. Just because I shouldn't have done it like that. I should have demanded a break. So 
Man. It really sucks on that restaurant in particular. Because I met some of the best people in my life through these restaurants. But I've also met some of the biggest scumbags in the world through them too. Absolute scumbags. And these people are cooking food for you. And this is why I'm always chatting away about myself, because I want people to know the place that I'm coming from. I want people to know that they can trust me. That I'm feeding their soul in a good way. I talk about all these labor rights and stuff, but there's folks that are way more informed than I am. I try to bring them up just because I myself am surprised by how much stuff people don't know about um, their, their workers' rights. There's so much that they don't know. And we're really at a point right now where the employers will take everything they can from you. They, I don't even know, I don't even know what they're possibly thinking on how that's sustainable for them. So I can't, I necessarily, single-handedly, I can't do anything to uh, fix the restaurant industry. But what I can do is I can show people how to cook at home. And you can cook better, cheaper, and quicker at home. And you don't have to rely on these restaurants. Because my next complaint is not only do they treat their workers poorly, they're not treating their customers much better either. They will feed you garbage. Though so they will maximize their profit in any way possible. They'll sell you food that they shouldn't be selling. This is why the health department, this is why we have regulations though. This is why we have the health department come through and check things out. Because restaurant workers, or the restaurant owners, will cut any corner that they can. And I say that just almost universally. Like, universally until you can start taking it by a case-by-case -case basis. And again, just... That's why it's important to have a relationship with the server, because the server, the server, you, not, the boss doesn't have enough time to meet every single customer, right? So the server is supposed to be a representation of the hospitality that they provide. So the server is supposed to be able to stand by the food that they serve you. I don't see that happening all the time. Sometimes I see servers really worried about the garbage that the cook is sending out of the kitchen. So there's all these systems in place to make sure that you're fed a good meal slowly falling apart. Anywho, that's probably enough industry ranching for one day. Now our vegetables sliced up. Excellent. Oh, and we got some onions. 
All right, let's get back to the split view. We're going to take this time to get a little sweep done. Goodness me, the oxy thing is out. Alright. That away, a little sweepy sweepy. And again, this is clean as you go, sign of pro. It also helps you cut down on the mopping a little bit because you're not grinding any food into the floor. It's not catching on to the bottom of your shoes and transferring to the carpet. And something, while, while I'm muttering along and whatnot, people really like to, uh, people or couples in particular are really adamant about like, yeah, I'll cook a few clean and stuff. And it's fine if, if you have that agreement, if that really works for you. I just want to throw it out there that it's a really dumb way to split up the workload. Or not a dumb way. I just, I... Yeah. I said what I said, I guess. Shots fired. I just think that it's, uh, you save so much more time cooking and cleaning as you go. All right, we're gonna give another wash of our hands here. Give a chance for that water to get back to hot, too. If you are working in a commercial kitchen, there's lots and lots of times that you're going to have to wash your hands. We're talking about employers cutting corners. One of the worst things I see in the kitchen is it's always the hand soap. It's always that antibacterial foam stuff and it just cuts through my hands so bad if I wash my hands the amount that I am supposed to. Now I got a nice little lotion routine going on so that wouldn't be as bad but one of the small recommendations the quality of life improvement that you can bring to the kitchen is your own hand soap something that is a little higher quality than what they're offering or even see if your boss would be willing to throw down on something like that that's a really if you're too nervous to um ask for a raise uh this might be one of, or if you just uh, are unsure if you want to practice your negotiation skills without bringing money into it for something that, that's something that you could talk to them about hey has it sup nerds ah sanji only started to smoke because zep did interesting hey that makes a lot of sense and yeah but that's really how the cycle continues for all that all right, I'm going to flip open the cook of books here. So we're going to go ahead and check. Yeah, I'm amazed how well this natural light is coming in right now. Very nice. How are you doing, Mr. Hazek? You still doing the apex? You doing the ranks? 
Okay, I got some onions. I'm just refreshing myself through the potato soup and the vegetable stock. Let's see. So there's a half cup, half a cup of finely chopped onions, and then for the potato soup, we need two medium-sized onions. So this is a small onion, right? And I'm gonna say three of them, three to four, would make it a medium. And we're gonna go on the heavier side on that. Okay, so two medium. Then we have these left over. What I really like about this cookbook is it's double bookmarked, so I can just switch back and forth. And what I'm doing is that uh, these ingredients here is that I'm going so the asparagus we're gonna cook on the side, that'll be a little side, uh, little side garnish that we have. We're going to roast those in the oven, and then after we're done roasting them in the oven, we're going to actually um, make these cookies here. And I think what we're going to do is that instead of an egg, we're going to substitute with some oil. That way, um, unfortunately, that won't make it vegan because we're still going to need to use a quarter cup of butter. Um, and also I'd have to look at these ingredients to see if they could actually be made vegan. Let's see, iron, peanut butter, oil, whey powder, non-fat, dry milk, solids. Okay, so, nah, it's just vegetarian. That's the nice thing about vegetarians is that there's, woo, no special baking requirements for them. Okay, so this is what we'll need for the potato soup. Is those two. I think we're gonna have to bust out. One more onion to make this all work. So we have some yellow, white onion. And now let's take a look at our celery here for the tomato soup. It's the vegetable sock. Let's see. Four ribs of celery. That's easy. Oh, let's uh, see how many potatoes. So two large potatoes, that would be about one. And again, I'm going to use three for a large. So six small potatoes all together. There's the two large for the soup. I have two, four, five. I only want to use like maybe three of these for my vegetable stock. So we're going, so what I'm going to do is that I have the full recipes available on the text document. You can follow those to a T and I'll read you right. I'm working with what my leftover materials are and I'm going to kind to kind of adjust the recipes. Okay. So since I'm adding three more potatoes, I can actually put all of those onions in. Let's see, are there any carrots for this potato soup? There is not. So we just need four ribs of celery to go with it. And that's one, two, three. You can see, I couldn't give you a good example with the asparagus, but you can see that this is losing some of its vigor. As you saw, that it kind of more tore away. So this is celery very much at the end of its life. All right, for celery, and then the rest of this is going to go into our soup stock. This is all going to go into our soup stock. This. Well, also, we're just going to chop this up. We're going to skin. We'll skin it still, chop it up. Hmm, actually I think I'll give it a really good scrubbing. This one's debatable on what direction we can go. And then we'll cut up all these carrots. 
All right, let's go refer to the vegetable stock again. So I'm splitting up all my ingredients. The reason why I'm going off the book right now is because I have all of this produce here in the sink and this has to be used. We're working with all of this. So I'm, uh, I'm adding a third more. So instead of doubling the recipe, I'm multiplying it by 0.33. Okay, let's see. So that also means we will need two more ribs of celery. And we got the the onions there. Adding in all the onions, perfect. And then we need some butter. Excellent. All right, so that will take care of the potato soup. Now for the fun stuff, the vegetable stock. We only need a half a cup of finely chopped onion. All right, and we're going to get our big pot out here. this on about a two and again this is more this isn't how I usually cook in the kitchen um, with the cutting board up here I do this more for uh, just for you guys to be able to see uh, I just want you all to know that I am very aware of where the heat starts and where the heat ends on this also I think overall putting stuff on your stove whether it be anything besides a pot or a pan is a bad practice because um, you should it's a bad practice a bad habit because it could lead to you accidentally setting something we're gonna wash that down end up setting something and melting it like putting the saran wrap down or the aluminum foil down Okay. So we need fat, and my fat of choice to use is butter. So I'm gonna wash this cutting board down. My go-to method is to use distilled white vinegar. It's a nice natural way to clean the cutting board. I put a nice douse on there. Ooh, crackers down, crackers down. We're even gonna let that roll down a bit. Yeah. Not a perfect roll. here and we'll get to cutting. Two tablespoons of butter. We'll let that slowly melt. Put this aside. Thank you. 
And I'm a little bit of a nut. This is the way I was taught to sharpen blades. A little bit different. Hazik, I'm so sorry. I just scrolled up and I, all your stuff came in. I don't know. Oh, you don't do Apex. Oh yeah, the little thumb. Yeah, sorry. Catching up, catching up with the chat real quick. Yeah, the small, the small some size ones. Oh, those are so good to eat whole. I like frying those just whole. Maybe cutting them in half. Nice little. A large potato, I usually consider a large potato to be like about three, about ni nice, about yay big. So this is, would be about that much bigger overall. Let's see. I clean you cook. Oh yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Butter slowly melting. Right. 
shoot, what was the last thing I saw you stream, Hazik? It might have been Stardew Valley then. I can't remember what shooter you were playing. Alright. Flipping back over. The potato soup. to our vegetable stock. And I cut anything out that's kind of like super bunishy because that's dirt is what that is. That looks great. It was probably getting a little dark there. Had a little butter fiasco there. The center of the pot got a lot hotter than the rest of it. So I'm doing... The butter was sitting over on the side here. The center is at its hottest right now, so I'm just running the butter through the sides. I just took it off the heat. Now I know I need to watch this a little bit better. I'll be able to start throwing in, stop taking my vegetables and stuff. I might need to add just the littlest bit more butter. That center is super hot. You gotta be very careful because what you don't want to do is burn your butter here. So what I'm gonna do since the center is so hot right here, we're gonna pull it off the burner. So this side is the one that's heating up now. And you'll, you'll be able to tell if you burn your butter, if it has a brown consistency to it. So what I did is I turned the temperature down lower. I'm keeping a good eye on it. And it does seem like uh, there's a little bit of burnt goodness that was on the pot from last time. And I was kind of analyzing that a little bit. I know what that is from. That's some baked chili beans and whatnot. But you gotta be careful because you're sauteing the vegetables in this so you really don't want it to burn otherwise you're going to get every vegetable that you have this nice burnt flavor. You gotta be very careful. And again, so it doesn't get too hot in the center there, we're letting it heat up from the side there until we can finally get in some vegetables into this mix.
one way to do, since I'm having such a hard time with this butter, as I'm going to add a little bit of oil to it, and this will help. That'll help raise the burning temperature of the butter. potato soup. Now we're basically doing the same, same. being uh, I added this to the soup because the soup will have other stuff going in it I really really want to do a good job with this stock so I really don't want to burn it I'm just going to have that on a low low Careful. So what I'm doing here is that it's coming around the edge. You gotta be careful because you can. If you do this, you can splash butter up in your face. So you just gotta be careful that you're not doing that. First thing the vegetable stock recipe wants you to add is the onion. So we'll go ahead and get that cut next. It's a new pot, so I'm really getting used to it. 
part of cooking is also listening. So I'm hearing that butter sizzle like that. I know it's a little too warm. And again, very important not to burn butter. So one of these, I do these because I like to cut as many vegetables as I can before I switch. And now I'm going to totally change this around. So still trying to heat the pot evenly. Double check in the chat. So, I'm so sorry, Hazik, I missed all that though. I, I didn't realize that I had to scroll up on my own chat. I thought I was doing such a good job keeping in touch with everyone. I really do appreciate the practice because that is going to be the next level of the stream is really cooking and cooking and yakking with everyone at the same time. That's really when it's going to show my skill for sure. Now for these, I like to, because this is the dirty part of the onion, I like to bring out a second cutting board for this part. This is one of those things that for minced onion, one, you can buy onion that's, uh, see I can't do this part very good. I'm not a fan of cutting it once this way, I usually just keep it simpler. My knife could be sharper, that's the issue here. This is one of those things, when I talk about knife skills, they're nice to have, but all knife skills are really going to get you, is that you're going to be able to cook in any kitchen having knife skills, but for the day-to-day -day person, I seriously recommend just using your food processor. There is no shame in using that. Butter is basically melted down. Get that on full heat or uh, centered. down this cutting board again. I went ahead and I just did the whole thing. 
So I'm gonna get these all co covered in the, turn that heat up a little bit. Now if I did this perfect, what would have happened is the butter would have been at the right temperature to where when I threw it down, it would have made it more of a sizzle sound. But that will come right back up for sure. All right, now we have, let's see what else we were supposed to add. So for the vegetable stock, saute a half a cup finely chopped onions in two tablespoons of fat. A dash of white pepper, a dash of cayenne, and a teaspoon of salt. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh my goodness. it quite a few times just to keep an eye on that because a dash just a little bit and a dash of cayenne oh yeah there it is Teaspoon of salt. Oh, a half a teaspoon. There we go. Half a teaspoon of salt. Alright. Make sure to get it all back on the bottom of the pan, that way everything's cooking evenly bottom of the pot, excuse me. Okay, it's time for that. Garnish. I'm going to show you what I want to do for this. So this is the when we're adding in a, the bouquet garni, <laughs> or the bouquet of garnish. So we're going to do for that, I'm going to slice this bad boy in half, right? Put this one back over. We'll have that whole piece there. And like it, and we're gonna get the cloves, and the bay leaf. And we're gonna do three cloves. And a big bay leaf, so a little bit, a little bit more. And for the onions on the saute, we're not looking for a caramelization, we're looking for just a saute, which is slightly translucent. What I'm going to do here, so I'm shut, holding the bay leaf in with the cloves like so. And that'll be easy to, to fish out. That's called a, a that's studying studying an onion. Just 
Now we very quickly need to get some carrots cut. This is how um, I cook quickly. Now I save myself a bit of time and how I give myself a little bit more time is that instead of adding everything into the pot at once, I'll throw it in little by little and this will help bring back down the temperature so something's not getting too hot until I have time to really stir it all up. We're going a little bit heavy on the carrots here because we don't have the turnips or the parsnips. And we went a little bit heavier on the bay leaf for that reason too. And right now this would be, what I'm doing to the carrots would be considered a slice instead of a dice. That's so funny. I just started working out the, the small end cutting board. I'm not sure why I was doing that. That's funny. Totally sabotaging myself. Just getting, thinking too hard. And instead of dicing, but I'm trying to do it in a pretty thin slice to compensate for that. And also make note how I have my thumb pulled back and I'm using my fingers as a guide. I'm not lifting my knife up higher than the fingers, always keeping it underneath the fingers. And then slow down on your cuts when you need to. You're not here to impress anyone, you're here to eat. You move on to the next day. The things that I'm waiting to add are the celery and the lettuce. The carrots are the next, th next thing that are probably going to take the longest to get tender. So they're the next thing that I'm adding. And with my priorities on what I'm trying to get done first, I'm trying to have this soup stock going. Uh, because it's going to take an hour and a half overall to simmer. <laughs> Quite a few carrots to, to still go through, but that's okay. And I gave an exact recipe. We're going to go ahead and bring up that recipe slide for any newcomers coming in. Cool. So this is an exact recipe that you can follow if you like. I'm doing a little bit of an improvisation. Just, uh, I call these uh, fridge raids, pantry raids. We're just getting rid of the stuff that is getting close to too far gone 
at near the beginning of the show in the sink. I kind of showed people how I separated out the good from the bad. There's a little bit of wilt in and stuff. And we talked a little bit about molds and what to look for, what not to eat. Make sure I keep my chat up. Ah. Practice makes perfect. I'll get that get the hang of this stream in no time. I'll be able to talk to three hundred people at once. Yeah, yeah. And still getting everything off the sides of the pots here. Back down to where the goodness is. Spreading it out, thinning it out, making sure it's evenly covering the bottom of the pot. Mmm, smelling great so far. So we were talking a little bit about how to split up kitchen duties and uh, and uh, agreeing with Hazak here because yeah it doesn't give any incentive for the person cooking to, to be cleaner about it but something that can save everyone time is if one person is doing this part you know cutting the vegetables and the other person's worrying about the butter not uh, burning, making sure all the ingredients go well together. And then there wasn't any today, but there are usually plenty of recipes, like with parsley and stuff, or, or uh, basil is another one, uh, where it's really kid friendly. Kiddos that are like, um, I think they would want to start helping the kitchen maybe around five, six years old is the youngest I usually see them come through and uh, so then picking the stems off of the vegetables is a really great way to get them into the kitchen introducing them to vegetables and stuff uh, vegetables are really the snack that everyone's looking for they just don't realize it yet but you'll feel way better way way better snacking on an apple some, even some apple and some Cool Whip is better than some of these pre-packaged nonsense that they have. back over to the potato soup. Just need more onion for that one. The spine will be there soon. So we just have some lettuce and, and whatnot cut up. Perfect.
All right, now we're ready to start adding that celery. stirring it yet until I also cut up that lettuce because the lettuce I don't really want to saute the le lettuce so I'll lose too much nutrients and whatnot ah uh, yes there's this, also this cucumber that we were going to add so we'll go ahead and And this is just one of those things I could cook the cucumber on the on the side or just have it raw. This is just one of those things I'm going to add it to uh, my vegetable stock and we'll see how it goes. Uh, something else I'm a little unsure of is adding the potatoes to the vegetable stock. I have just a couple extra ones that aren't going to go into this recipe here. Yeah, I just need that one red item that I... So I figured I'd see how that turns out. That's a little experiment. Again, I gave you a... Um, what's streaming right now, this little slide, is a tried and true recipe that you can use. It is from the joy of cooking. It's currently a cookbook that I am referencing right now. All right, now we just have a bunch of onions to cut. I want to kind of do that over here on this side, just so I have a, will make it a little easier on me. So there's this first papery skin that will fall off. I usually take that harder one off. I'll cut through the rest. Now all I'm doing here is cutting in half. You gotta be a little practiced with the knife, just a little bit, to be able to uh, cut them with the skins on like that, because they can, they they'll more more easily roll away on you. All right, I hear this sizzling. It's time to give it a stir. Need to cut up that lettuce and we'll add water and we'll be good to go on that. Oh, I guess I still have the potatoes. 
And I want to prep the asparagus too, because I can throw some of those asparagus ends in. I go pretty far down in the root because there's a uh, this is where the most nutrients would be right there by the, by the root so you want to want to include that in there potatoes yeah I'm not sh exactly sure what this is going to do to the vegetable stock here it probably will I imagine that it will thicken it thicken it up a bit uh, I don't imagine it adding that much nutrients though Chopping away. Probably what this is my first go around, but probably what I could be doing is I could probably be cutting up right, these vegetables side. a little bit smaller. Take one. 
Oh no, I let the chat go. It blanked out. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Watch out. All right, back in the business. All right, now these guys here. This is kind of my, my last inspection on everything, making sure I didn't miss anything. Because like I said, we're salvaging a lot of this food here. So they're making sure to get it, uh, plenty of once-overs and such. Again, these might, I'm going to add these to my vegetable stocks. They might not, these might make my soup stock be a little bit more bitter. This is much more of an experiment for me. Like I said, what I have up on the camera right now is a tried and true recipe through the joys of cooking. And that one will not leave you astray. I am doing a live pantry raid, in this case it is a fridge raid, and what had to go this time was a lot of the produce. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and cut this stuff up as well. So I have this soup at a uh, two. When we add the water, we're gonna go ahead and kick it up a notch. Adding in as much leftover vegetables as we can.
And this last little, these last little bits right there, those were the toughest parts. I'm sure they're the sourest. I'm going to go ahead and throw them in anyway. Because that's the crazy nut ID. on chat and it's scrolled all the way up so I shouldn't have those that same old debacle. Okay, now I need to add enough cold water. water just enough to cover All the vegetables off the side in here. Just a little bit more water. It's covered, but I want to give it just a little bit more room since it's uh, such a deep pot. I don't want it. Uh, I don't want anything. I don't want this evaporating on me. There we go. 
And we won't forget our studded, studded onion added to that mix. All right, and we bring that to a boil. Now I'm not going to turn, to bring this to a boil, I'm not going to turn it all the way up to an eight. I'm actually only going to have it at a six and a half. Okay, I'm going to grab the plate. I'm going to transfer this asparagus until I'm ready to cook with it. We're going to peel off our onions now. I'll just skin off our onions. And you can see how I can really be saving a whole lot of time if there were two people breaking up these tasks. One manning the kitchen stove, the other one managing the food prep. I see that as a really good split in the work. I'm not crying, you're crying. I'll be back over in chat land in just a sec. Let's see if anyone said hi. Ah, no one yet? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I'm really happy about this uh, sync camera, though. I think this gives a good the lay of the land here. Or you do a dumb amount of damage. Time for another quick sweep and some hand washing. For those that aren't quite sold yet about the cleaning as you go bit, is that that's really what's going to make you look like you know what you're doing in the kitchen. You're not exactly going to uh, inspire confidence if the sink is full and there's burnt dishes somewhere or just, you know, caked on macaroni and cheese is more what I'm thinking about. 
or there's just a mess everywhere, it's not going to look good on you. That's probably, I think, we were talking about what makes a good cook. That's what makes a good cook. Is someone that can cook quickly and cleanly. Because really, anyone can cook making a huge mess. It's not that hard to do. I don't know if I'd call that cooking though. Ugh. These guys diced up. Onion ends cost extra though, everybody. That's just so stupid. Oh, nope, I let the chat die again. My bad. My bad. Sick. There's okay. people enjoying the stream. Good, 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 good. Feeling like I've been cutting for hours. I have though. Lots of prep gone into this one. Found up all these vegetables. But you know what? That's only going to motivate me to make sure that I get this stuff included in other meals so I don't have to prep this much. Because again, the reason why we're doing this. to reduce our food waste. Alright dude, surprise we made it so far. Nasa makes some delicious food. Oh dude, don't you have a corrupted something like that? This potato soup is really great and I've actually made it with some homegrown tomatoes. There's a potato and tomato soup. And let's see, uh, is this the same recipe? Oh, up. They require, it's the same recipe as this, except it has five cups of seeded sliced tomatoes, or three cups canned tomatoes, two teaspoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of paprika, and a pinch of Ooh, ingredient that I don't know. Sherry? Sherry? It says Sherville, but I only remember it as Sherry. Sherville? Hmm. 
I gotta work quickly because this is this pot down here is coming to temperature. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil to this because I didn't have butter in the bottom of it. doing that so it helps it cook evenly and not burn. I'm just bringing this to temp. I'm about to switch up I'm about to switch up all the burners here. You'll see. Excellent. The cutting is finally done. Yay, set. Okay, so I was going to switch the burners like this. And actually, I'm going to move this one over here. So I'm going to crank up the heat on this guy real quick. Now that burner will come to temperature really quick. And I rather, I rather instead of it coming to a boil and then switching it over to this one and have to mess with the temperature, a bunch again. I'd rather just move it over there, have it finish coming to temperature, and then work on it. Oh, shatters, Take a look at our potato soup real quick. Basically just getting all the vegetables, a quick little saute. You're gonna need to work on a little bit higher temperature, like a four when your pot, if you can see the pot is this full. Did you just use your voice to 
And I would say officially what this is, is this is more of a, um, a sweat. I think how this is coming together would be more of a sweat than considered necessarily a saute. You also, for a saute, you also need to make sure that your vegetables are cold, or not cold, uh, dry. Otherwise, you're technically steaming them. Because if you think about how water and oil you know how the oil will sit on top of the water? It's the same thing. So when you have the oil and the water, they're going to be in two different places. And you're actually just going to be steaming the water off. It's not going to penetrate underneath that oil. And so it's going to be cooling down the oil. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this as an exact science, but they don't collide. And so it makes it a steamy instead of sautéing it, that direct heat with the pan. I see the steam starting to rise, so I'm going to go back over to my vegetable stock. Now we want to bring it to the key here is that we don't we want to keep as much nutrients in this pot, so we want to bring it to a boil, but we do not want to keep it to a boil. There's a big difference there. I'm filling up my water. I'm using filtered water. Here, here in the States, some of our water infrastructure was built in the 19th century, so it's always really important to follow local ordinances on whatever your water is go on whatever is happening to your water supply. I'm very fortunate to where it's pretty easy for me to be able to get water. Probably not just fortunate, the most fortunate. When we when we talk about rights and things that I'm thankful for, it's bad. It's... All right, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna give this a little stir. And then we're gonna let it so I already turned the heat back down. Stirring it, stirring it. Now we gotta get that lid on. And we brought it all the way down to a low. We're already gonna put our timer for an hour and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and bring my oven up to 350 degrees. Before I get the lid on this, I very much want to see it at a simmer. I've been thinking 
I've been fit, what's been on my mind, and this is really funny, is that uh, what's gotten me all quiet is not that I'm concentrating on the food so much. Is I don't like having to leave bad reviews at places, but there's just some some things that have been so uncalled for that I had been leaving. I, I it's only two. It's only two negative Google reviews. But I just feel so weird about it. I don't like doing stuff like that. I feel dumb afterwards because I feel like it didn't really need to be said. But at some level it's because I, I can deliver such good customer service. Sometimes my I feel like my expectations are too high when I go places sometimes. And of course I'm trying to be considerate of, of um, of everyone's time, I'm not being uh, ridiculous like some people would be. I know a lot of people like to throw around the terms old-fashioned. I don't think I'm old-fashioned. I think I'm just polite, you know. And uh, sometimes, you know, but just because I'm polite doesn't mean that I'll also admit that, like, I'm perfect because everyone has their moments, you know. You're allowed to let your emotions flow through you. Now, it's good to kind of bring that up because I see a lot of guys, what they do is that they feel like the manliest thing that they can do is like mastery and control over their emotions. But bottling it up and not letting it out, not letting it express itself is a form of dishonesty to yourself. You really need to let it flow through you. And you can see now about how, you know, I did something. I did, oh, in my opinion, I did overreact in just these Google reviews. But because I did something, I did overreact, I did follow through on my emotions, it allows me to kind of look at what I did, right? And see about how I can prove, because I'm still following through. It's not that I just had that emotional outburst and I stopped listening to how I felt. It's even after, you know, the conflict is over and I decided a way to resolve the issue and now I've grown from that because I decided that that wasn't the best way to resolve the issue. Because what are my issues really? You know, that it was an issue of not feeling seen, an issue of not feeling heard. I think those are very uh, typical feelings for, for men to have. Because uh, I think I, I think a lot of men um, want I, I don't know where I, exactly where I was going with that. I think what I was going to say is a lot of men want the attention of women, but they do things that will get the attention of men instead. Like, the huge muscles and stuff, that is like something that men idolize. I don't, I don't see women idolizing that at all. And really, why would too many of them, with just the amount of violence there is towards women, why would they want someone that could literally pick them up with half a hand? That doesn't, that's not safe and, that's, that doesn't sound safe and secure for them necessarily. But for a guy, a guy going around with his buddies, a guy sees that, that's probably the most secure he can feel, knowing that another guy has his back. But the guys don't do it for each other, necessarily, you know? Anywho, I throw random tidbits about how to be a man in my cooking. Because, again, it wasn't something that I really wanted to, like, 
be known for or anything like that, but the more I saw men talking, the more I realized that they just have it wrong. Part of the little things I do is that I want to destigmatize like men being in the kitchen. Like this shouldn't be like I shouldn't get a gold star, right, for being able to do this, to be able to cook at home. This doesn't suddenly make me like the epitome of marriage material, right? This just shows that I know how to take care of myself. It but that's how far the bar now low in the ground the bar actually is. Just because I can do this, it's so all of a sudden it's supposed to be, ooh wee, look at this man of a man that can, you know, not, he can, he can do it. it, 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 it come on. The bar needs to be risen higher. Like, very easily. You know, what, what would that bar look like? Well, learning a second language, knowing a second language, that would be a good one. That would be raising the bar for myself. Having an expertise, taking a class, certification, all those. We still have that timer going. I'm going to get those cookies going. Let's see where we are with the potato soup. happen very quickly it has been sitting here on the water for, for a minute and we need just a little bit more water on this one you can kind of see how this potato right here we'll bring it over here kind of see how it's hanging up above the water we want it all covered and our oven just got up to 350 talk about dating a little bit and maybe some people are like what's this cook doing talking about dating I'm like what's what are what are your reasons for picking up to cook right you're trying to improve yourself is it really just for yourself wouldn't it be nice to also be able to impress the lady with your cooking skills yes it would but we need to be realistic of what that actually is that's why I say these things about like this this cooking stuff shouldn't raise the bar how you carry yourself, how what you do for others, what you read, these are what raise the bar. Let's see what happens with this potato soup after it comes to a boil. You know, I really don't want to, uh, I was just going to do those cookies and substitute the butter and oil, but, um, I feel it's baking is something where, that you really have to substitute ingredients carefully and know what you're doing to substitute in baking because I would say that cooking is an art, baking is a science. Let's get a zoom in.
There we go, let's see. So until the potatoes are tender. Did my timer? No, there it is. So this is gonna take about 15 minutes. It has not yet come to a boil. Again, just when it comes to a boil does not mean we want to keep it at a boil. We want to have it under it. That way we can preserve as much nutrients as we can. I did forget to add my salt though. I'll go ahead and add that now. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to add salt to this yet. We're going to wait to do that. And there I go, making a big old mess. Trying not to throw away salt. You know, salt used to be more, salt used to be really, really valuable. Salt, you could, because salt's a preservative, you could actually tell you how you would know if a war was coming back in the day, is that you'd watch, uh, you'd have people watch the salt supply. And if someone was buying a whole lot of salt, you knew that they were mobilizing some sort of army and going on the move. Just some food for thought. Or as I like to say, some thought for food. Feed the brain, feed the body, feed the mind. Kind of one of the secondary themes to this show. My primary goal for this show is to show people how to cook. Show how easy it is for them to cook at home help them save a bunch of money because it's really it's really not that hard I know a lot of people are intimidated by cooking and I think the community the cooking community doesn't help this case there's people that will still call me an amateur just because I don't know the same things that they know but I'm very confident in the fact that if I went into a head-to-head -head competition that I turn the judges' heads just as much as they would. Yeah, my game is, I thought I'd fly down for a second. <coughs> you see, constantly going back and washing my hands again and again. Well, you know where to go if you need help. We're going to make sure. Now, careful on this lid, this can get very hot. So, just know that at some point you might need to open it like this. Now, I'm just making sure it's simmering. And this is slightly ajar. All right, now these potatoes have come to a boil. I'm bringing it down to a six because it's still going to hold that temperature really well. Now, I try to be very good about not being appliance heavy. Instead, I try to really encourage people to use appliances or to buy garlic that's already minced. Are you doing it? And this is some of the things that like some cooks would needlessly uh, gatekeep with. Is that they would say stuff like, "Oh, you don't, you don't mince your own garlic. You can't be a real cook." Yeah. Mincing garlic is probably the biggest waste of time since I I cannot think of a bigger waste of time than mincing garlic. I rather mill corn by hand, you know. <laughs> And do that. This tomato soup is smelling great. It's still boiling, so I can really knock the temperature. It's, I tried bringing it down to a five, but now it's all the way down to a three. And I gotta understand that this is the double burner on this and not the single burner, so it has a double wide on that. A fast boil feature on it. 
Now we're going to bust out the old cast iron here. As you can see, we have a nice and clean cast iron. Now, a couple times on the show, I, or most of the times on the show, you guys never see me using <laughs> soap and water on this, but it does happen every once in a while. It's, uh, I guess it's a little bit of a cooking experience that I really can cook cleanly, not burning the hole on this. So what happens is that people will just, uh, they won't wipe it off. They'll just kind of let the old residue sit there. And that's just burnt. That's not, that's not what seasoning is. Seasoning, the pan being seasoned is more like this fat uh, is gets so hot that it kind of makes a plastic and it makes the surface smooth. And that's what the seasoning means for this. And um, there used to be something in soap that I can't remember the name, and it would break down the seasoning. But they don't have that in soap anymore, so it's okay to use a little bit of dish soap to get this a little bit of a clean that needs it. Just make sure to hand, just make sure to dry it off right away. Now this is still working at a hard boil here, so we're still spinning it. We're gonna check the tomatoes. We're gonna prep, get this cutting board put away, get the knife put away. Get our what should we call it? Asparagus into the oven. The asparagus is going in the oven last because it's going to cook the quickest out of everything. Uh, the book I was just reading is that there was an old Roman saying that said, "Get it to me as quick as you can. I, I need it quicker than you can cook asparagus." is supposedly a Roman saying, which uh, I have a hard time believing that personally, seeing as how many things the Romans stole. So, it's probably an aboriginal quote for somewhere. My goodness, my goodness, this is this still and running pretty hot. Oh we have God. about an hour there. to give my, oh my goodness, that just <coughs> won't stop boiling, goodness. I was trying to give my knives the respect they deserve. I think that, that when we talk about, like, when people are, like, uh, kind of got this apocalyptic fetish going on, I'm like, one of the things, and they always, like, talk about the things that they'll need during the apocalypse, I'm like, or things that would be missed, I'm like, kitchen knives. I mean, there's millions of them places, but the first thing that you'd probably miss is a good knife. But specifically a kitchen knife. Not just some pocket knife. Alright, we're going to grab a fork and we're going to see how tender these are. I lie. We're going to get this prepped, ready to go. Alright, well next guys I see you're, you're getting it. Right. What do you have? 
Now, another thing is that I don't specify um, the type of oil to use. The reason being is that different oils have different uh, burning temperatures. I make a Spanish tortilla every once in a while. And uh, that is the only item that... Okay, I'm gonna, since this is so hot, I'm actually gonna just move it off the heat for a second. I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use this to start bringing this up to temperature. Because I'm pretty sure that's as soft as it needs to be. And I can even compensate so it's not off the heat. Dude, that's so stupid. And I can just turn that up up to on a six <laughs> and I'll hold, it'll hold the temperature. Now I know this is going to start getting heat because this oil is going to expand. Perfect on a simmer there. So yes, we are going to probably hold off on the cookies. However, I do like to bring the, I'm just short on eggs today. I don't really want to improvise this because the reason why I have these boxes is because I want it to be foolproof, especially cooking and baking are two different things. So, I'm still a novice Can't die, Jim. when it comes to baking. Too essential. Yeah. Still a novice when it comes to baking, but that's why I'm not adding extra that. steps for myself right now. <laughs> so instead of having a complete failure, you'll see me do it on my biscuits. My biscuits have been the hardest thing for me to make. But now I know how to do those right, so I'm sure I'm going to nail it next time. I almost did biscuits today. We're going to start adding these to the oil. And don't worry about them stacking over what I'm doing is on the second staff over. I flip them to the other side. That way the heads on each side have an opportunity to kind of flatten them out. Try to get as, as most in there as possible. And the reason why I don't mind this being a little thick like this is because these are going to cook really quickly. You can see that that already came to a boil. I'm going to totally just take this off the heat now at this point. And I might have interrupted myself you just have the boss with one of your guys. earlier. Now I don't know what I was. Uh, yep, lost that train of thought again. <laughs> I just switch the pan over just to help it heat up evenly. Whew. Oh no, I, I let the jet die again. Oh my goodness. Alright, so that's going. Alright, back to the end of this potato soup. Um. 
Nice, everything's coming together great. As you can see, I've been over the over the oven for a couple hours now. Okay, so here's the trick I'm going to do because this is Teflon, so I'm not going to dip this in at all. What I'm actually going to do, see how I'm using that against the wood? Now I already can tell that that's super soft. Look at how soft that's just breaking apart. Probably could say that this has been overcooked at that point. So I can go ahead and close up the book. Now what I'm going to do here is that the trick is to not touch it. Just don't touch it. Just don't touch it. It's the same thing with hash browns. You want to make good hash browns? Leave it alone! This is off the heat now. We're going to go ahead and immersion blend this. Now, I was thinking about it. If I ever did, I'm always interested in making as um, an interactive stream for folks. So one of the things I might do is include a cook that without the appliance. But usually I'll go ahead and cook it with this appliance. I'll show you what appliance I'm going to use. This is an immersion blender. We're going to use it on this soup. Now, what you can do, if you want to get the same consistency, but you can let this soup cool all the way down, and you can put it through a traditional blender. I must be getting more comfortable with this thing because for the longest time I've, I've never installed a tip here while it's still plugged in. Now I bought, I bought a little bit more of an expensive immersion blender, but I want you to know the reason why I include this one in particular on the show, or just the immersion blender appliance instead of say like a food processor, is that this costs $20 and this is way more helpful than you may think. It opens your buying canned soup is so expensive compared to how you can make it at home here. Something else that I'm doing, we we're just talking about metal on the non scratch pan. And I have tried, and even though that there's a little bevel, even though it looks like it's not going to scratch up the bottom of the pan, I've still had that happen. I'm not sure how it happened, but it did. So what I recommend instead of going all the way down on this to make sure that you're not hitting the bottom.
the little teeth around it are going to keep you from nicking any side of your pots, right? Because even in a metal pot, you wouldn't want that hitting against the pot because it would chip. So this has been designed in a way they'll, they'll keep it safe. I'm just letting you know, through the practice, I have still managed to nick up somehow. Alright, that has a nice sizzle on it. So all we're going to do is flip it. I really like throwing on some garlic powder. I'm being a little heavy on it just because this stuff's a little bit older, so it loses its flavor. A little bit more salt. Dash of pepper. Gonna turn that burner off. And we're not gonna disturb that seasoning. We're gonna let it bake on. We're gonna go ahead and move it to the bottom here. One more thing about this potato soup. Okay, right, so beat into them two tablespoons of butter. Oh my goodness. We have to take that off that burner. That was that burner's still really hot apparently. Which I'm surprised for it just being out of two, that cast iron really cooked it nice for it being out of two. Alright. I've never seen someone with so many items. There's so many items. So instead of a, a light cream, we're just using a little bit of oat milk. Just the littlest bit of half. That was probably about a quarter cup right there. No more, no more than a quarter cup. That really helped loosen it back up a bit. Before we put that away, we're going to go ahead and taste it. Here. 
And I have more butter lying out somewhere. Huh. I wonder where it went. in that butter right now. What I did just there is I found a small impurity. Let's see what it was. Looks like it's just uh, an end of an onion. Which means I have room for improvement. Give that a good little taste. And you can see we've been cooking for hours now at this point. Hardly a mess to take care of. In fact, as I'm I still have another 50 minutes to get the whole kitchen cleaned up, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god! He knows what I'm saying. Bro, you're gonna break this game. Whew. That one was a little bit hot. I think I am gonna add that paprika. I always am looking for an excuse. Oh, good, 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 good. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we love to see. Look at that empty paprika. That's what I'm talking about. You want to use up oh, your spices. I know spices are expensive, but every day they, those spices sit on your shelf is another, is a little less taste that you're getting. What was that? That was paprika. I wonder if that was the only paprika that we had. Pepper, everything, garlic, cayenne, cumins, curries. That is great. I love it. We can get some. That's an accomplishment. We can get some fresh paprika in there. Oh yeah. Okay. And. Uh, Boom! All right. Bro, look at look at all the flower pots. Like, look at like, I wish you could see my back. <laughs> we'll actually do one one final one stir before we put all this away. Just to make sure that butter that we threw in there actually. Don't need it. Right here. 
you come back, I'll drop a century. This, just make sure it's not going crazy down there. Looking pretty good. Probably another five more minutes on that asparagus. I saw some of the heads got nice and brown. Um, if you steam asparagus, they're actually asparagus holder, so they'll go down the root down first. And it's actually that the heads are so delicate that um, the steam coming up from the double boiler when they're in bunches like this with the heads up here. The steam itself coming off of it will actually cook the tops of the heads. So the brown's down there. The heads are browning up, but I'm waiting for more for the other end, the stem, to, uh, that that has the, the at the end of the stalk, the opposite end of the head. It, it can be very chewy if it's not broken down all the way. I really like finishing it off in the oven. I haven't mentioned I put that in the oven for 350 degrees. They've been in the oven for about 15 minutes now. <coughs> we have a soup, a potato soup that's all knocked out at this point. <laughs> and we're just tidying up now. Uh, I think this is going to be the first stream that I ever actually get to play a little games before we finish up cooking. So we're gonna do some rune terra. I'm gonna have this pot on. I'll let people know what we're doing, but we're going to um, we're gonna switch the um, the category from food to drink, and we're gonna switch it. You know what? We're gonna leave it on. I'm not sure whether or not to switch it to rune terra or to leave it on food and drink. I kind of like the idea of switching it to Runeterra because that will show down in what I've streamed recently. It'll also show that I've streamed Runeterra. And I look, I was, um, I've been a little skeptical about uh, playing video games on the same account. Uh, but in my suggestion box, which you can view on mobile or through the app, I've actually had a lot of positive responses where people agree that on the weekends should be a little bit more chill, laid back, playing some video games. We still have another 45 minutes and I want to finish making this stock with you. I don't want to do anything off camera. So we're going to be going the distance. So I'll be able to enjoy some of this food, get the headset on and we'll play some Runeterra, a little card game, pretty easy to follow, it's a fun game to watch too because you can, even if you don't know nothing about the game, you can just look at all of the card features and stuff. I was going to be like, oh yeah, they're going to die, die hard, um, what's it you call it, um, risk of rain 2 battle going on right now. Dude, it's just, I'm literally doing nothing. Tanner's doing it. I'm I, I've been hearing that he's being vicious. Dude, he's literally a god right now. I got some potato soup made up and I, I'll, oh, you're, you're going to like this part. Dude, it smells so good. 
So yeah, you heard it here fo first, folks. Yeah. Hashtag no lie. I've been sitting there getting so hungry. I had food right before I came home, too. I've been sitting there getting so hungry just smelling all this food. Thank you, man. That was amazing, dude. I appreciate the compliment. I'm making me hungry. <laughs> well, it's about to be served up, so don't you worry. Oh no! That could have been a catastrophe. That would have been super bad. That could have gone all over your computer. Yeah. Oh man. Scary stuff. Fuck out. What's going there? Alright. Let's have some of this delicious soup now. Go ahead and get them. Oh yeah, where am I going to put the asparagus, though? Something I want you guys to kind of take note on is that this is a metal bat, but be careful if you have a plastic bat, because this, you're usually touching the handles, which are cool, sometimes get hot, but the side of this pot's very hot. So if you had it pressed up all against the side there, you could end up, if it's a plastic, you could end up burning the plastic on there. And I bring that up all the time because I know that there's, I, I swear I've seen a microwave from the 60s in one of these apart, in one of these apartments that I rented. It's one of the cheapest rentals I have been able to find. It was just a thousand dollars a month for kind of a two bedroom kind of offshoot of an apartment. But it was the moldiest, disgusting thing I've ever walked into. Anywho, that's neither here nor there when we're talking about all this lovely food. I don't even know what got that on, what got me on that one real quick. My bad, folks. Ah, oh, yes, the appliances. Yes, I was saying that I swear I've seen a microwave from the 60s still in service. It's the first microwave I ever saw that had a power level 1 through 10 on it. To know if these are done or not, we're going to bite one of the ends. We're going to give it like... We're going to give it like five more minutes. In the oven there. But I'd like to point out, as I finished up cooking up the main meal, this vegetable stock is on the side here. We finished cooking up the main meal. The sink is empty. Nothing for the partner to do, but to enjoy the food. If I had still not convinced you about cleaning as you go, let me, let me bring one more family friendly. Um, there are more time. If your partner does not have to clean up after you at the end of the night, no matter how delicious it was, it still work. After everyone's nice and full and stuff. If you split up the work that way, one cooks, one cleans, to me, that sounds like less time for adult activities. If you know what I'm saying. Maybe. Five more minutes on the asparagus. We'll be good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and put
put the lid there for no particular reason. Get my soup scoop. Soup and a fork. Oh yeah. Woo, okay. And as that five minutes is going, I'm gonna go ahead and start making some changes.
prepare you a villainous thing. Well, that's okay. You should probably run anyway. Don't duck. your mushroom crack. We didn't prepare you a villainous thing. Well, that's okay. You should probably run anyway.
looks like a hammer for feelings. <laughs> Covering fire. Yum, yum. Miss, not by a long shot. Fire knows its own. is nothing. Let's investigate. Bristle, attack! Swiftly! Ride onward!
You know, honestly, I honestly forgot that these were in here. They came out gosh darn perfect anyway. Voila.
Is that?
Okay, we had a fun couple of games there. Cooking until the sun goes down. We'll have to throw on some more lights on the situation. All right. The last thing that we need to do now is straighten this. We'll have a nice vegetable stock. We'll see if it says anything about uh, season to taste. So, from my understanding of how stocks work, you're not supposed to salt it. And I checked the instructions, and they did not mention salting it either. We are going to get a fine strainer here. Uh, around 120 and risk of rain. The computer chips, the graphics cards are melting. I've never seen a game freeze so much. already <laughs> I made some homemade vegetable stock and potato soup and um, yeah from scratch I used uh, we had to use a lot of the leftover vegetables because we were gone for a week out in Florida there yeah and uh, so, yeah, there's not a, I think the only casualty was a uh, bag of salad. That's it. That's the only, only produce that went down the, the wrong hole. Awesome, Everything else just got cooked. Thank you. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, I was seeing that. That is a ridiculous game that you got going on. You're doing nothing. I love the color of this, by the way. Amazing looking color.
So, I thought maybe the uh, asparagus would make it bitter, but it actually kind of made it a little sweet. Um, I thought the potatoes would make it too thick. Um, it's definitely, you know, now I think about it, it would have been pointless to salt this before because the potatoes would have absorbed all the salt. And I really like this, putting it like this instead of in a pitcher, because in this bowl like this, this is going to let it cool down much more rapidly. And I know this seems a little bit crazy, and we're only using three. Very, very little ice here. This is just, I know it waters it down a little bit. That's just to help it cool down. All right. Let's see what else we do. So, I'm unsure what to uh, kind of think, because I know all the nutrients that they cooked out from these vegetables, but that all the flavor going, right? this wonderful stock out of it. I should put an estimate on how much vegetables this was. Let me kind of look at the receipt here. Sometimes vegetables are like 70 cents and other times they're like double the price, but when you double the price you don't really notice that it's just, you know, a buck 25 instead. It's hard to notice stuff like that all the time. Uh, I'm going to guess $2 in carrots, a dollar in potatoes, the asparagus was probably $3. So we're up with six dollars for this vegetable stock. Oh, and the, cu the cucumber, let's just overestimate it and say two dollars. So we're at eight dollars for this stock. All through leftover, all from leftover ingredients though. So instead, it's not that we saved eight dollars. You need to look at this a different way we made eight dollars and that's what cooks do all the time is that they'll take something that is 45 cents worth of food and they will turn it into an 11 dollar plate and that's the best example i can show you about how your labor has value Okay, folks, so I'm very sad because it looks like this is the end of the vegetables. And even though we used them all, it just, it almost, it doesn't, it doesn't seem right to just toss it. So if I were doing more of this, if I was going to make a lot of stocks at home, I'd 100, 100% 
start a compost. If you're more in the apartment complexes, it might be hard for you to have a compost. But it, since uh, I have heard a great statistic recently that over 50% of Americans live in the suburbs, and there's nothing stopping us from uh, connecting as a community for all sorts of stuff, for our own transportation, to make our own mul uh, compost piles. You could even have the compost go fund a um, community garden. And once you have a community garden going, you have a community garden going, you're going to have the town start talking about where their water supply is coming back. And once people figure out where their water supply is coming from, then we really start getting to the heart of the matter of so many different things. It all starts with a little bit of food. Now I am, I am going to tidy up. I am going to do this. I didn't just play a couple games for no reason. I'll show you how quick this will this finish up. I am a little bit tired, but I'll finish it up. ahead of myself. The reason why I said that we made eight dollars is because that was the cost of the food, right? That we now have this stock out of it. Which, this is about two quarts. Maybe a quart and a half. This costs $3.99. Sometimes I see these stocks. These stocks right here. Uh, these stocks right here. $4, $5. This probably has way more nutrients in it. I wonder which one does have more nutrients in it. rapidly cooling down.
make sure to give a visual inspection on this guy real quick. Or it's pretty in under it does it on its own. Leave the wooden spoon out to dry. things left out just for more people are going to be joining the room now and this gets put away yeah that was the whole show today we even got in a little bit of video games oh man I still left it on a uh, room Terra unfortunately but people will kind of get the point I think I left that up anyway okay. uh, probably not anywho thank you all so much for joining me today uh, let me say my last hurrahs to the chat here. I was disconnected for a minute. Uh, let me go check the main computer. Nope, doesn't look like I missed anything. Uh, let me see if I got any new followers. Um, I need to go to stream manager. All right. All right, no one to thank? Okay. Thank you all so much for coming. Really appreciate everyone that showed up. It was a nice little pantry raid. It's a solid day of cooking this one was. Happy Friday, everyone. I'll see you all next time.